Hello, and welcome to Property Law 101. I'm Sarah Bronin, and I created this series to help you understand the basics of property law. This series covers four fundamental questions about property and property law, and today we are talking about a topic at the intersection of the third question, which is using property, and the fourth question in our series, which is holding interest in property. And that topic is alienation. So what is alienation? Alienability means the ability to transfer, in this case, the ability to transfer property. But sometimes, particularly through covenants that run with the land, people try to restrain alienation to limit the groups or mechanisms by which property can be transferred. So in the past, as you know from the Shelley versus Kramer video, there has been a racial component to this restraint, these restraints on alienation, including explicit restrictions through covenants that run with the land that property can only be owned by people of the Caucasian race. People in the past might have thought that their property values would be protected by such restrictions. There are other restraints on alienation that might limit transfers to people in a particular family or part of a particular religion or group of people. So there are obvious problems with constraints on race or other immutable characteristics. But more generally, restraints tend to make individual properties unmarketable or less valuable. In the market economy, we know now, uh, markets transfer, re transfer resources to their most highly valued user. Restraints on alienation result in economic inefficiency. So now let's turn to the question of what courts typically do when they see restraints on alienation. If the restraint grants to the new owner property, quote, as long as the new owner does not sell it, then a court will simply uh, take the provision out and give the property to the person holding the property in fee simple. So that is a simple example. So on the other hand, uh, reasonable restraints on alienation might be allowed. The restatement in this, uh, on this point says that to, to determine whether something is reasonable, you weigh the utility of the restraint against the injurious consequences of enforcing it. So utility versus injury. So what about a grant that gives property to a new owner, a quote, as long as the new owner doesn't sell the property for five years, end quote. So that might actually be acceptable if there's some rationale behind it. Like for example, the property is a vineyard and it'll take five years for the grape vines to produce good wine. Good example. <laughs> All right, what about a grant for a home in a subdivision? So moving on to another example, uh, a grant for a home in the subdivision, it says, okay, you can sell the house as long as you get the approval of the original developer. Now this probably won't be acceptable uh, if the developer does not hold land in the subdivision or it may not even exist anymore because it's hard to see whether there is a legitimate interest in creating this restriction and giving veto power to this developer. However, consider a grant in a home in a subdivision with a homeowners association that says, all right, you can sell the house as long as you get the approval of the homeowners association. A court might look at that restraint on alienation and say, well, this is reasonable. Uh, it might also look to see whether in the bylaws of the homeowners association, the, the association has to act reasonably. But you do see these kinds of restrictions in cooperative buildings in New York City and in other cases as well. Turning to another topic, what about a grant that prevents you from leasing the property to someone else? In other words, a, a document, a deed, a grant that requires owner occupancy. Again here, courts have found that this is reasonable based on various sets of facts when there is some public interest in the restraint. 
So there are many examples of restraints on alienation, but for today, I'm gonna to leave it there. Uh, I would love to hear from you and connect with you through social media or through my website. Uh, and until then, I will see you next time. Thanks.